all that information was going through. And he got the, de the document uh, signed by the King, King George V, and the British government to allow the, this, the, the Cairo gang to execute the sovereign all Ireland government that was uh, elected, democratically elected by the will and wish of all the people. So they would not allow that to function as a government. And that's what they did. And that contract killing. That's contract, contract killing. Was signed that's by the king. Did. That's what they did. And there's no use talking or telling me anything else because that's they're the facts of the matter. And all you've got to do is where did Tom O'Donnell put the, those bonds to tell people? I've been asking him all his life since he took over. Yes. And they changed the peace, reconciliation, and prosperity. He changed it. It was the Free State changed it to the Peace Initiative. Right, okay. It was Pope Pius XII, the Peace, Reconciliation, and Prosperity Process. And we explained about the prosperity process, about Did. Brenda Doreen, going out to the Venian brother in America. And they lobbied to build all those factories in Shannon and all over the country. That was the prosperity process. A huge process. success story. A huge success story. And why, is, why, is that, why aren't the people told that? And why, why are they covering? Why is the RTE covering? RTE doesn't even have a license. They're all going shout about <coughs> your license. Yes. Only the sovereign government, by the will and wish of all the people, can issue a license. That's why there's no error under the sovereign seal. They're not even entitled to wear that sovereign seal. Because they're under the Crown of England since the 6th of December 1921. And if you want to see the document, you can show it there in that. Yes. Show that, John. But like, the, the one thing... There's, uh, the, there's the document that established it. And, yes. and you know, and why is it they can't, they can't... They don't want to know the facts. And those civil servants and those judges and those uh, uh, politicians, they don't want to be accountable. But you see... But I can't, I'm only a layman in all of this. I mean, I'm not uh, academically qualified or versed in any of these very important issues. But what I can't understand, Billy, is, is this. I still come back to it. Why is it so difficult for the present government, the past governments, to recognise the facts of history? Why would they commemorate Bloody Sunday and not have the proper facts told to the people by our national broadcaster or by any of the broadcasters across the country. It seems the only thing that I am saying is this. It is, seems to be the IRB, you and me, and a few other people that are telling the facts as they are. Now, you've always said it, and you're a gentleman to say it. I wouldn't say it, but you are. You're not castigating. You're not judging. No. You're not causing division. No. You are just saying people know the facts. That's all I'm asking. And I said to the Catholic Church, who I have great respect for, and, and the old Celtic Church, and all churches I have great respect for, because men would be a savage without them. I have great respect for people, but I have to no respect for propaganda, lies, deception, and fraud. And to, to me, uh, uh, on last Friday, mm -hmm. the, I, I wrote down the date, you know, where did I put it? Oh, yeah, the date. And it's important. RT came out on Friday, uh, uh, the 20th of November. Yes. On the 6-1 News. And they said that Michael Collins sanctioned Bloody Sunday. Michael Collins did not sanction Bloody Sunday. It was the Supreme Council of the IRB that sanctioned Bloody Sunday. And it was either us or them. Because I know from Joe McGrath, who I knew very well, and Joe McGrath was chief. He was one of the intelligence officers. That's all Joe McGrath now possible. Yes. Him. And he told me uh, uh, that when he took the Irish Swedes take tickets to America, of course, it was illegal. He couldn't sell them there. You're right. And the mafia, <coughs> he had to, the mafia, the head of all the mafia in America met Joe McGrath. Yes. In a hotel or wherever it was. He told me the name of the place. This is the bonds to the papers. And when he went in, when they arrived, Joe McGrath had all his people in place, armed and got with weapons. And when they came in, they thought, oh, these bloody Irish, you know, pennies, you know, we'll take all their money and yeah. we'll take a big share of the hospital suite. Joe McGrath was a tough man and he always always said to me, Billy, you want to be tough in this world. Yeah, you're not tough enough. All right, all right, and, he and is. Right he was, and he said, and he said before he let any of those out with their lives, he would have executed them. Yes, they all had to sign, 
and he told me that in his that he never had any problems with the hospital sweepstake tickets afterwards. Okay. And he said it was the same as in Bloody Sunday. It was the same thing. Mm. It was either us or them. It was either those allowing those Cara gang to execute, execute the ministers, <clears throat> the judges, and the top civil servants yes. of the sovereign republic of Era. Because you must understand, Britain doesn't have sovereignty. It's royalty. And they couldn't allow that now, to happen. Now, here, here's an angle that I just thought of. If Sam McGuire was not strategically placed in his appointment, the Cairo gang would have, would have executed Absolutely. all of our we would have judges, no government today. top civil service and politicians. We wouldn't. Right. And you wouldn't have any government. And I often said, and I don't like saying it, but uh, Ku Conant McGuire, mm. which, look, if you look over there, you yes. see the, the, you saw that. In yes, Canada, I did, yes. That it was at least 400. He would, they couldn't, mm. Britain couldn't. Up to then, Britain had, the Ireland was the breadbasket for Britain. Yes. And then they decided to expand their empire. Yes. And they didn't, to expand an empire, they, you have to have a crown force and you have to have a royal navy. Yes. And you have, and you, they have to be fed 365. They didn't have the food to do that. And the, the army marches on his stomach, as we know. Oh, of course. And that's why <coughs> they conquered Ireland from the east coast to the Shannon. The Shannon is Maguire territory. From Anna Lockern <coughs> and the River Shannon to the estuary of the Atlantic. And that's why we did the Brendan voyage and we did yes. all that. Yes. And, and Christopher Columbus coming here. Because that was co-colored. Well, he was the last of my family yes. to own all that. And they executed, well, they didn't. He was, he, what happened to him was, in, in Genoa, he was poisoned <coughs> by the British agents. Yes. Because, and then they got the Shannon. And that's, they had to have that to, um, first of all, they had to have all that information in, in to, for the Royal Navy. They yes. got all that. It was the monks and the brothers and all those, uh, um, uh, you know, the friars that had that information of navigation. And that was to bring Celtic Christianity to Europe and around the world. Yes. And eventually they brought Roman Christianity around the world. Mm. But to do that, you had to have, you had to know how to preserve food on board. So Correct. You Absolutely. Salt. Like the salt. You yes. didn't know how to bro your, your boat. And you had to know the Brendan Voyage, which is going back uh, many course. centuries before that. That was your compass. And, and your compass. Your compass. And I gave those, I, we talked about the crystals that were used by the Vikings. And that. Yes. I, they were in the vaults of Dead Papers. They were the, some of the memorabilia. I gave those all to the university and everything. What did they do with them? Well, the thing is that, are they still there? Where are they? And Where you are know they what? And you should get three, them back. Three, uh, look, you should look for their return. On the site of Willowbank, which is there. Yes, now we're going to have to take a look. But I wanted to just just refer Show back. Willowbank there. Uh, I will. You? Yes. Because it's so important. Look at this, folks. Look at that. This is Willowbank. Just explain and that's a little where bit. the Supreme Council used to meet here. Yes. Look, that was the dining room and that was the drawing room. Right. And they were all, look, where they were all, uh, you know, they used to grow uh, yes. pineapples and fruit and everything. in a beautiful garden. Self sufficient. You know, and, and, but that was a big enough house which you could easily, it's Christmas time, you'd have a hundred of the IRB or, and Republican people there. I see. And, and they would. They Where would, is Willowbank situated now? It's right on the river bank. When you go through, you know where the playing fields are in? In, in, in Yes, in I do. The university, but yes. That, they're all the playing fields, it's all the land at the back. I see. Acres. Right. But that site is the site that was important. Yes. It's the site. Because that was, and Vaughan's Hotel was to be restored. Now, Brendan O'Regan told me right. that, um, he told me that, um, that, uh, my father had a group of people. They spent their whole lives trying to get to university for living. Right. And they really did work hard to do it, I know. And, um, you know, there were great people in Royal Banks were involved in that. Sir John Barbarone used to bring the, the, the orchestra to Limerick to, to educate people in music. All those schools went to his, and in the evening time they'd have a dress, a dress rehearsal or a dress uh, program yes. for the for people. But in the morning he played to all the country children and all that. They all went in the buses. My goodness. So, but can uh, I just refer back to something 
um, on that about the bread basket for Britain. Yeah. Because there is a very good series coming up narrated by a brilliant man, Liam Neeson, the actor. But it's talking about the famine. And the the, <coughs> the most important part of the of, of the, the, the documentary is while men, women and children of Ireland were starving and eating grass and crawling to stay alive out in the winter cold with literally only a rag over them. The landlord's gentry were the agents of England who were taking all the food from the land and exporting it to their own. And the our own Irish people were dying. And, and the, that's what that's what I told you. That's why we said, the, and Chris Fogarty, you know, in America. Yes, Chris. Has yes. written a great book of it. Yes. <coughs> and has given all the factual uh, on that. Now, I'm not inciting anyone to, no, to hatred. Lie, but but I am saying, though, if this, if that happened in our own century, in the last century, Britain would have been brought up for uh, criminality in Europe, in the Court of Human Rights, after what happened in the famine. So I think it's but very easy. there was no e famine, John. There was never a famine. How could there be a famine and all the food that was deliberately done? Britain, to expand its, its, its empire, yes. had to have that food because the might is right, according to Britain. Yes. And their crown forces went in. They found a way of going into a country and causing a row. And they sent in their crown forces and their royal navy to sort it out. And that meant they robbed and plundered the whole place. But that's exactly what they did. And But Billy, my but point, my is, point is this. Our Irish politicians and the president had no right, absolutely no right, to forgive the British for the massacre of hundreds of thousands of Irish people and millions having to leave on coffin ships. Now that, they have no right to forgive that. No, not on my behalf or your behalf or any Irish other person's no, behalf. This is the whole point that I'm saying to you. I'm saying look, that we've had two, two eminent uh, <coughs> judges, Mary yeah. Robinson, <coughs> yes. And Mary Bank, who are eminent, well, they're not judges, they were lawyers. Lawyers, right? yes. Two eminent lawyers. Yes. Why did they not bring that to the courts in, in The Hague? That's what they should have done. But, they yeah. should have brought Lord Rothschild, who gave 100,000, uh, Guinnesses, who gave 100,000, and Rupert Kipling, who gave 50,000, to buy the top class German guns. For when when the Ulster volunteers were found, they were Ulster volunteers, and when they they deliberately armed them, yes, with those guns, they're the top class German guns, two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and and that has caused mayhem and all that violence and everything you've seen for the last hundred years in Northern Ireland. Why didn't Mary McAleese, uh, President Mary McAleese, and President Mary Robinson? Who goes around the world telling everybody what to do and how yes. to do it? Why doesn't they? Why do they not take and still take it? Because Britain are still of the. They will never ever give in to Ireland. No, because they treat no. us as dirt. Yes, and always do. Well, you why see, are we yeah. paying for Britain's war? Well, you see, this Britain's. is the point. We're <coughs> we're not getting the proper facts no. of our bloodied history from any of the media. Only one or two. Um, and the, the one man that I actually have great faith in is a historian, Dermot Ferriter. He is absolutely, he tells it as it is. And he's about the only historian that I have well, listened I to. I don't like him. Do you not like no, him? No, I don't. Okay, with that, we'll take because a quick got, break I... and we'll be back with you in part, I think this is part four, part three, okay. very shortly, Billy. Just, okay, thank you. Got a minute, Marcus. <laughs> 